Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. Today, I'm gonna take you through the Yes Welder YWM211P. A pulse capable welding machine. It's a MIG setup. And we're gonna be playing around with some aluminum. We're gonna do an outside corner joint and we're gonna play around with some fillet joint as well. See what this machine can do. And I'm gonna show you the settings that I'm using on these welds. So far, I have used the Pulse Welder from Yes Welder, uh, Pulse Make quite a bit on this boat. So I did all pretty much all of my tacking together with it. But the big thing, if we come around on this side, the big thing I wanted to improve on my boat builds was with the MIG, was getting longer welds and prettier welds underneath the boat, so underneath the deck. This is stuff you'll never ever even see, but the way I was able to lay in some really quite nice looking MIG welds with that pulse, uh, I've been really, really happy with that. So it's something that usually I would be running my spool gun and it would be super inconsistent and I'm still working on getting my settings dialed in. And there's a lot of good heat transfer. I don't know if you can see that but we have really good heat transfer through on all of those welds. So that's what I've used it for application wise. Let's look at what it does on the bench. So the point of this video is going to be to show you using the MIG setup with the YWM211P. This is that Yes Welder Pulse MIG. It's got MIG mode, it's got pulse mode and double pulse. But I'm just gonna show you right now the standard MIG mode, and then we're gonna touch on the pulse mode because they're really simple to use and they give some really good results. I haven't even dug deep into the double pulse yet, but we'll do another video later on when I dial all that in. But what I wanna show you, it's really easy. There's a lot of videos that show a simple fillet joint, and I'm gonna do one of those, but we're gonna do some, an outside corner joint and I just want to show you how well this can lay in on pulse mode. So I'm going to take you through my settings. I'm just welding on eighth inch. This is 5052 aluminum to sheet. But we're going to touch on the settings I'm using for these couple of joints. And that's pretty much it. But I'm going to show you what this is capable of. I did swap. I'll post the video. I'll tag it in here in the description. There's a liner in here that's graphene. It's like a high density plastic. And I did swap that out so that I can run the standard MIG gun. It's just so much more comfortable, especially when I'm working on a boat and I'm in tight places. A lot easier to use and the pulse mode runs really well with it. Especially, I haven't tried on anything super thin, but eighth inch, no problem. I am running on 220 for my plug-in. It does run on 110 as well. Haven't played around with it much on 110 yet though. Just to tack things up here, I'm in regular MIG mode. So I'm gonna leave it there. I am gonna turn up my volt and amps. Just try to get in there hot. So the, there are some settings on here. I can only go so far with my voltage until I change that arc long setting. So if I turn that down a bit, then I can turn my voltage goes up. And if you saw that, so if I I'm at 18.7 maxed out. If I back my arc long off, I like it around 2.8. It gives me more uh, stick out when I'm welding. It dropped that voltage down. So, got to find your sweet spots. But we'll back off to 17 and a half. It's a pretty hot tack. And then the only other settings really to look at induction, I run it at zero run in that's your lead in wire is at four right now i'm actually gonna turn that down to two hot start is at 10 even though this is a tack still gonna dial it back to six pre-gas half a second post gas half a second burn back time at the end there we're gonna dial that back just a little bit it just helps keep your tip clean it helps keep your wire clean at the end of your weld and then synchronized synchronization is on so that's my settings just to tack things up on eighth inch aluminum. I'm gonna get these tacked up and then we're gonna change it over to pulse mode.
So that's going to be for a fillet. And this will be for an outside corner. So it lays in some nice tacks, no complaints there. And all I'm gonna do is just give this a quick little wire brushing. And so I fill it while it's same thing. I already wiped them down with some acetone. So we'll just rough it up a little bit, get some of that surface layer off with the wire brush. So let's talk through the settings I'm gonna use on pulse. First, I'm gonna change my MIG to pulse MIG. Everything's gonna change here. And I've actually got things already loaded on channel three. So I can go to my channel three preloaded settings now I'm in pulse MIG and I'm in single pulse. If I go to double pulse, double pulse will light up here. I'm not using double pulse, keep that in mind. And our settings, we're gonna crank up the heat. That does reset every time. So this fillet joint we're gonna start with is gonna be, we're gonna go 19 volts, 130 amps. If we look at our specs for double pulses off, our weld specs, we have induction, gonna leave that zero, run in, dial that back a little bit, hot start, turn that up a little bit, pre-gas, post-gas, burn back time. It's running up 19.4, 130 amps. And what I have found with this welder is that it really likes a pretty steep angle in terms of a lead in. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it that steep angle to lead in. And what I'm gonna do is just build my puddle as it gets welding. And then if you, if I were welding, you'd be watching me do this. So if I was traveling this way, you'd see me building my puddle. And then I'm gonna go just past my puddle. I'm gonna come back into it. Pass, come back, pass, come back. And the cool thing about this welder is I can actually watch my puddle turn into that little dime, that little circle, and then I can move forward, come back, build another circle on top. So I'm gonna do just about a four or five inch weld here, and we'll see what it looks like. Remember, I didn't preheat this other than my tack weld, which was a couple minutes ago. So there's that fillet weld. And the one thing that we're gonna play around with here before the video's over is this start. You see that just a big buildup. It's not super hot. That's why I tack in standard MIG mode. I find that it just gets in there quicker, but the dimes, if you wanna call them those, really nice fill. This is, I haven't cleaned this. So what I wanna try I'm gonna grab my map gas torch real quick, and we're just gonna preheat the heck out of a spot up here and try to see how it lays in to start. This is a good time to talk about it. There is a paid promotion tag on this video, and that's because Yes Welder, their welder's been on my list of welders I've been looking at for a while to purchase, mainly for the affordability and for the pulse capabilities. So, you are going to see that there is a coupon code. I'll put it in right here. It's in the description as well and a link. You get 10% off of your purchase at Yes Welder on any of their welders. And it gives our channel a little kickback. So it saves you money, helps us out, everybody wins. But that's why you're going to see that paid promotion. We were able to team up with Yes Welder to get you a coupon code. So I just preheated that. I saw it sweat out. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same weld, same settings, and see if it just burns in better to start. So if we come on in, I would say that's a lot better, and I could have spent more time and put more heat on it. But if we look at this start, 
there's a little build up there to start, but it lays in pretty quick compared to this well that's got a couple big boogers where you can see I was starting to move and it was still just not as hot. So preheating makes a big difference when you're running this welder, especially on eighth inch material. So fillet weld, fine and dandy. You can see the heat, the pass through of the heat on the back side here on each of those welds. You can see some penetration coming through on the back side here as well. So all in all, happy with the penetration and the settings there for a fillet weld. Now we're gonna see what this can really do in terms of dialing things in. Normally, if you gave me an outside corner joint like this, 100%, I would be TIG welding it because I have more control. I can make it look really pretty and my other spool gun, it would just blast right through here. I might make it a few inches or I'd have to move so fast that I wouldn't get good reinforcement, but we're gonna see what we can do here. So I'm gonna tile the heat down just a little bit. All I changed here was my amp, my volts down to 18. My amperage is at 107. And personally, I think it's still going to be too hot, but let's see what it does. And I am to make it prettier to start. I'm going to go ahead and just preheat this. And if things are going well, I'm going to run this whole weld. We'll just see how it how it looks. If you haven't you can't tell. I haven't played around with this. Uh, I've done a little bit of playing around, but not a ton, and it's been a little while. So this is actually the first time I've had this welder out in a couple of months or so. But that first fillet joint was a little unnerving, thinking, wow, I haven't welded in a month or so. Not what I do every day. We just weld when we need to, build boats for fun, and something I really like doing. Keep in mind, I am going to run right over top of this tack that I laid in here, but I'm going to start my weld in this open gap and then we're going to run through. Not a good start. I blew my tack apart. Turn this down a little bit. Drop it down to 17 volts and 90 amps. Let's just see what happens. I'm just going to, we got a good tack in there now. I'm going to go ahead and go forward. I was a little hot. So I'm still a little hot. Not too bad of a buildup to start there. I'm going to come back a little cooler. And we'll come from the other side and see what we can do. But you can see we're just blasting right on through. So I'm going to go back to 16 volts. Drop this to 75 amps. We're going to do the same thing, just go in the other direction. Let's see what happens. So there, I would say not quite enough heat. Let's go back up. Settle in at 88 amps, 16 and a half volts. I think we figured that heat out there. Because once I got going, that laid in there really, really nice. So I started that weld right about here at the back of this. This was too cold. And then I was able to just keep going steady, really consistent in that profile there. We have penetration all the way through the back side, but you can see I was way too hot up here. This was where it was a little cold, so we didn't see a lot. And then look at that nice consistency going through. That's one of those things that Pulse MIG is gonna be able to do for you on aluminum versus my spool gun. Again, there's no way that I could do that because with standard MIG, that heat just keeps building and it's hot, 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 hotter, hotter, hotter. With that Pulse, that on off, you can hear it just a little bit, 
but it gives me the chance to lay my weld on there and through there without just blasting through, especially in a tricky joint like an outside corner. So one more time, my settings there. And this was pretty well preheated by the time I got to this. 16 and a half volts, 88 amps. I'm just using the standard 2T trigger setting. So I am welding with 5356 filler metal, 035. So I do have my setting to that particular filler too. Otherwise, my arc long is at negative, it was actually at negative three. That way my arc, it seems to give me that spray transfer a little farther out away from my contact tip. And then our pulse or our weld specs, induction zero, run in was eight, hot start six, pre-gas 0.5 seconds, post-gas 0.5 seconds, burn back time was two. SPT 0.0. .0. That is my first, I'm gonna continue as I learn this machine more and more to give you breakdown videos like this on specific material and specific settings because I think it helps a lot. If you're getting into welding and you wanna weld aluminum, this machine can do both, steel and aluminum, but I think it helps to have just that little bit of information rather than trying to guess for yourself. At least this may, maybe will give you a starting point in terms of settings so you can tinker around on some scrap in your garage or at your shop. Remember that coupon code is in the description. Take a look, see what they offer at Yes Welder. I've been happy so far. We'll keep you updated on the boat build as well. Thanks for watching.